Hey guys, welcome back to the second video in the testing playlist. Now we'll see some practices that we should follow when we write tests. And the first one, and actually most important one, is called Test Driven Development, or TDD. So TDD is a software development approach in which we write the test case before the actual function or code that we want to test. And it's like building a safe base or net for our app to avoid bugs and crashes. So how does this actually work? In this TDD approach, as I said, we write the test case first. So let's say we have a function that gets some items from a database or an API or some data source, and then this function filters that list to only keep certain entities and then returns that list. So this is the function in general, but what we are going to do is first, we are only going to actually create the function signature as we will see in this image now. So only fun get list, for example, returns a list and we don't return anything. So we don't actually write the code yet. What we do next is we write the test for that code. So we test if we actually get items from our data source, and then we test if we actually properly filter those items and keep the entities that we want. And then what we do is we run our test, the test will fail, why? Because the function is empty, there is no code that filters anything. So the test must fail at first. And then we go back to our function, we implement the code that filters that list. And then we go back to our test and then we run our test again. Now the test will pass or it will fail, it might fail. So we go, we adjust our code and then we run the test again and so on until our test passes. So this is test driven development. We don't actually just implement the function and then write some tests for it. No, we just write the test first and then we'll write our function above that test. So we're trying to write code that satisfies our test and then we keep running our test until it passes. So now we have a well-functioning, stable function that we can use. And this is exactly what we are going to do in this playlist while we are building the app that we are going to build this playlist. So we'll first write the test cases and then the functions until we actually pass the test and then we say this function is working good, let's move on to this second function. And then other good practices we have when writing tests is that we need to isolate our tests as possible as we can. So this stands for the scope of our test. For example, in a, in a unit test, we need to test a function, then we need to actually make sure that only that function works. So we don't want to test two functions in one test or so, because in this case, if the test fail, we don't really know if the problem is in this function or the other function. So we need to test a single function if it passes, we then go to the other functions. So we need to isolate the test of this function from that other function. And of course, there are some age cases in which we need both, but in general, we want to make sure that our tests are as isolated as possible. And another practice is actually testing both positive scenarios and negative scenarios. So a positive scenario is when the user inputs a valid input, like a valid password, we test that if the password is valid, do we really return, for example, true, the password is valid or not? And then the negative scenario is when the input, an invalid password that has special characters that we don't want, we test and we make sure that we actually return false, the password is not valid when the user inputs an invalid password. So these are two different scenarios, negative, I mean, negative and positive, we need to test both of them and make sure that both scenarios work as expected. And then last thing I want to mention is avoiding flaky tests. So what are flaky tests? Flaky tests are tests that don't give consistent results. So when you run this test, sometimes it fails and sometimes it passes, which is something we don't want. We want our test to pass all the time. So if our test fails and then passes without actually changing the code of the function that it tests or the test itself, then that's a flaky test, which is something we definitely want to avoid. Because the main purpose of writing these tests is that we want to make sure that our functions work properly by actually making our tests pass. And if our tests pass sometimes and don't pass sometimes, then there is something wrong with the test itself or with the function. We need to find what the problem, fix it, and then make our test passes to make sure that we have a stable function or two classes working together or whatever we want to test. So these are flaky tests that you want to avoid. So a conclusion of what we mentioned in this app is the TDD, which is a software development approach, which stands for test-driven development, which is writing the test before the function implementation, the test will fail, implement the function, the test might fail again, change the function or refactor it until the test passes to make sure that 
our, our function is stable and we don't have any bugs or errors that make us problems and bad user experience. And then we also mentioned the scope of our test and trying to make our test as isolated as possible. We don't want to test two different functions in one test. We want to make them isolated, test a single function and then another function in two different tests. So that if a problem happens, we know in which function actually the problem is because if we test two different functions in one test, we don't know if it's in the first function and then the second function or in the second function. And then testing both negative and positive scenarios, as I said, and then flaky tests, which are tests that pass sometimes and don't pass sometimes. We want to avoid these, we want to make our test pass all the time. So this is it for this video. Now we actually understand what tests are, what the types of tests, practices to write tests. In the next video, we'll write our first unit test. And then in the next videos, we'll actually start building the app and write tests at the same time for that app. So see you and bye.